my name is Serena. I am here today for both your safety and entertainment. Welcome aboard this air-conditioned two-bed flat above Jane's Accessories Exeter, which I have not left for 14 days. Please note this is a non-smoking environment in line with UK law and my stress-related asthma. If you care to look out the window to your left, you will see the edifice of Exeter's 14th century cathedral, and to your right, site of worship, Mecca Bingo. Today, before the advent of a global pandemic, we were due to visit Moorland Village, Widdicombe on the Moor. This grazing ground of wild ponies is a favourite with our more senior clientele and is located 10 miles east of notorious prison HMP Dartmoor. As ever in Devon, the beautiful and psychotic go hand in hand. But as our fleet of coaches are now grounded, we will soon be approaching my sofa, complete with warm dent created by Wilf my ex. His things were mostly boxed up before Boris instructed us to lock down together. Indefinitely. That's Wilf, 20th century edifice and in no way a site of worship. I will now spend 12 weeks indoors for my safety but no one's entertainment taking all the bloody comfort stops I like. I will be wholly dependent on Wilf to get my Ventolin refills, or this virus may take me on a tour with no return leg, and the items on my shopping lists. Something he finds mysteriously complicated to achieve. How does a person confuse spam with prosciutto? A bottle of rosé pétillon I asked for, four quid prosecco is what I got. I suppose Wilf did always say to me, I don't know what you want, and expect me to tell him when I wanted him to figure it out himself. Wilf will be taking his bike out at precisely four o'clock every afternoon. That's where he is now, making love to the sunlit highways and byways of Devon. He asked this morning, had I hidden his bib shorts, knee warmers and overshoes? Why? Can't bear to look at or smell them, least of all touch them. Oh, why did he get these? I said to try the range for humane mouse traps, not these horrible snap traps. The mice will be having a feast on the handbag leather downstairs since Jane locked her doors. They keep saying on the radio about nature taking over since the roads emptied and the planes left the sky. Families of deer are sighted bounding across the A38. Rewilding is quite something if you live in a meadow, but a different prospect in a rodent-infested flat in a small to medium-sized regional capital. The only stags we're familiar with were penis DD boppers. At least they're hibernating now. A kicking out time is eerily quiet, apart from the ambulances. I listened to scratching in the skirting boards, Wilf snoring next door, and picture sizable groups of mice doing tours through my tin cupboards, led by a mouse with a large umbrella. We will shortly be enjoying a comfort stop at the couscous packet behind the chickpea towers. I direct your attention to the following archaeological gem, a chipped mug emblazoned with world's best auntie and a photo of Serena's baby niece. Serena tucked it here when she couldn't bear to see it anymore, but felt too guilty to bin it. To your left, note the thrilling modern architecture of the dented kidney bean can, thrown by Serena at the wall behind Wilf's head when her period came for the 25th time. Please feel free to gnaw the sticky label of the lemoncello bottle brought back from their honeymoon in Florence and nearly finished by Serena one frosty night on the roof. And she looked at Wilf and quietly marvelled that she could love someone so much. 
Perhaps their nocturnal itinerary then proceeds under the floorboards to the back of my bathroom cabinet. They stop to nibble on a lush banana and oatmeal soap before taking in the zone of special scientific interest. My old inhalers and anti-wrinkle creams and the mountain of ovulation sticks. A monument to my total and utter failure. I can't say I miss all the drivers at Westwood Horizons, but I find myself worrying about our regulars. The residents of Green Laurels were always game for a laugh. One of them, Rajani was it? Used to get the giggles and have to suck on her oxygen canister. Oh, they must be terrified. Such generous tippers. Wilf should be back now. He gets home and showered in time for the one show at seven because he finds the key worker stories touching. He's soppy, really, for a great big hulk of a man. He brought a bunch of tulips in with the shopping today, oh, not on my list, and looked terrified in case I took it the wrong way. He blurted out that he just thought to bring something from the outside in till I could get out there myself. And why is he so bloody relaxed about crying in front of Patrick Kilty, but never in front of me? When we ditched the IVF, all I wanted was for him to say just once that his heart was breaking as well as mine. I'll set the traps now. Don't need a man for the dirty jobs. Not any more. I'll put one under the bed. Saw one shoot out from there yesterday. Christ, look at the dust under there. Behold the unbroken vista of Kleenex tissues and sweet wrappers, the rolling tumbleweeds of hair. Oh my God. So that's where it fell. The bike bolt Wilf put on my finger when he proposed. Still fits. Is that what I think it is? Kim Cattrall's Satisfaction Sex Manual. I hope the younger mice avert their gaze from its curling pages as they pass. I bought that in desperation, when months of timetabled procreation killed all spontaneity in the bedroom. Look at page 27. We never tried that one. <laughs> Might be more feasible now Will Scott fit from his cycling. That's tomorrow planned, a clear out. I think you can safely say if you haven't eaten a tin of kidney beans from 2018, you're never going to. I remember how it happened now. Wolf was telling me they were rich in folic acid. I suppose I could sit with him when he watches the one show on catch up. It's a pain us using the lounge in shifts. I'm sure I read in Marie Claire you can mix Prosecco with Lemoncello. I could get a couple of glasses down. Oh, where is he? Out of nowhere I feel my breath getting raspy. I sit quiet on the bed and look out down the street. It's nearly dark. Well, he'll break his neck one day, taking the corners too fast, hitting one of those ruddy disinhibited deer. I am totally still, thinking of the landmarks of our life, whether I really want to chuck them. And that's when I hear it. The trap under the bed goes snap, 